everybody. again 
the graces that God is giving to us. And it can't be quitting our job and moving to you know, the South Pacific or becoming monks. It's got to be very simple and accessible things that we can access every day. Learning to pause, learning to release, learning to receive the presence of God. He restores my soul in the midst of the chaos so that we can get our lives back and we can thrive despite the madness. I think you're going to love it. All right, so that Bible study, that book study, will begin this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. And we, as always, we start with a covered dish dinner and a free babysitting provided by the youth. So we hope to see you out for that. Good morning. I hope we're ready to match the intensity of the children downstairs. Whew. They, were, they were ready to go this morning. And uh, so I hope that you are here and ready to worship um, let's stand and worship together. <laughs>
us in the past, what you do for us today, Lord, and what you're going to do us for, do for us in the coming uh, weeks, days, months, years, Lord. I just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I just lift up this offering unto you. Just bless it and further your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
time of, of praises. Does anyone have a praise that they'd like to share? What's God been doing good this week? Donovan. Did you get a bear for Easter? No. Okay. <laughs>
his grandpa and his vision. Does anybody else have a pretty place? Yes, go on. Uh, yes, please remember the Reen family. There's a father, mother, son, and daughter-in-law, all with children. Okay. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody with an unspoken request, you can just lift up a hand. Oh. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord. We are a blessed people, and, and Lord, we do thank you and praise you for the truth of Easter, that you rose again. Lord, that you rose again to save us, and Lord, that you uh, are, are, are wanting to be our God and our King. And so, Father, we just uh, we do give our praises to you. We lay them down at your feet, and we, we thank you for everything from um, bears uh, for Easter and fidget spinners to uh, having eternal life and new babies and um, for uh, new deployments and, and for those who are able to be with us today. And, uh, Lord, for keeping us safe and, and, and for birthdays and, and for bringing grandmothers home safe from Florida. And, 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 and Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you're doing. And Lord, we just we do want to lift up uh, uh, these prayer requests. We think of, of, of Logan and, and Lord, the six-month-old six Weston with Down uh, syndrome who's having surgery. And, um, and, and Lord, for Pete's grandpa and, and New York. And and, and Lord, for the Rain family and, and for the others that are on the list, Lord, we, we, just, we just lift them up. And Lord, we lay them at your feet. And Father God, we just ask that you do something that only, um, only you can do in your power. And, and Father God, we just thank you and praise you um, for what you're going to do in our midst here today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Are we having children's church today, or is everybody staying up here? Yeah. Have children's church, okay. All right, the children are dismissed to children's church.
alive. Those are three small little words, but they took the entire world around this Jesus, and it shook that world. And it's still shaking our world over 2,000 years later. Jesus is alive. You know, just a few days before this, uh, it, it, it wouldn't have made many headlines because Jesus had walked the earth for 30-some years and, and he had his followers around him for three years. And, and, and so on Thursday of this past week, that wouldn't have been big news because Jesus was walking around the earth. He was talking to people. But on Friday, the story of Jesus takes a turn for the worse. He's killed on the cross, and to make sure that he's dead, a Roman soldier pierces his side with a sword. And Jesus is placed in a tomb that is sealed up. But here's where things take a turn for the better. This Sunday morning, Jesus walks out of the tomb, alive with victory over death and the grave. And Jesus puts the whole world on notice by this fact. And everyone's like, whoa, that's never happened before. All of Rome, this learned and cultured people, were like, wait a second, we have all of these gods and we've never even heard of any one of them ever being killed and coming back to life again. Either they are, they are killed and died, or they are just immortal, but none of them could write this story. Among their many gods, no one could have pulled this off. And we know for a fact that Jesus coming up out of the grave, rising again on the third day, had an impact on the people that followed Jesus themselves, the disciples. After all, just a few days ago, Peter is being asked, aren't, aren't you one of the people that followed Jesus around? And Peter's like, don't know him. Three times. Even Peter is intimidated by this question coming from a little servant girl outside the gate. He cannot even bring himself to answer truthfully. He says, no, I, I, I never knew the man. But once Jesus rises from the dead, Peter completely changes. He's full of courage. And he preaches to the entire world that Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead. And Peter goes from being the biggest coward in the county to being one of the most courageous people that we've ever known. And I want to take a look, if you don't believe me, take a look at this account and how it's explained in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. And we're going to see the changed Peter that comes when Jesus is resurrected. And it says this. It says, The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people, they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of this people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. 
Jesus is the stone the builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Today I want to take a look at what changed in Peter. What changed in these disciples that, that made them going from, from being cowardly to create courageous. And I want to take these lessons and apply them to our own lives so that we can get to the next level of courageousness as well. Because I think in this world today, we need to be courageous. We need to be courageous and able to courageous and able to, to in order to be able to handle what is coming our way. And so what can we rely on that will give us courage as Christians? Before we take a closer look, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time. Fern, could you open us with a word of prayer, please? So the first thing that I see from this scripture is the resurrection of Jesus Christ should give you courage. The resurrection of Jesus Christ should give you courage. You know, there was a man, uh, and this man was bragging about how he had cut the tail off of a man-eating lion. And, and he had done it with his own pocket knife. And he was going around showing the tail to everybody and, and, and telling them the story. And finally someone came up to him and they said, well, that's great, but why didn't you cut off the lion's head? And the man replied, well, somebody had already done that before I got there. <laughs> you see, it doesn't take much courage to cut the tail off of a lifeless lion. But it would take quite a bit of courage if that lion was alive. And you know, that's a little bit of the, the bit of news that the disciples got on Easter morning. The lion of Judah was alive. The lion of Judah had died at the hands of the Romans on the cross, but that was Friday's news. Sunday's news changed everything. And the Lion of Judah was now no longer dead. He was living. And that news changed everything for them. Suddenly their fear turned into faith. Suddenly the worry that they had. What am I going to do? What am I, how am I going to spend my days? That turned into confidence. Their cowardice turned into courageousness. And we see this on full display in the scripture. Starting in verse 1, it says, The priests and the captains of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. And they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John because it was evening, and they put them in jail until the next day. Did you ever receive a piece of good news that changed your whole outlook on your day? If you receive the right kind of news, it can change everything about your day. Maybe you got told by the doctor that your cancer was gone. That, that's some news that can change your day, isn't it? Or maybe you heard a, a testimony or a report by someone that you had been praying for and, and how God had brought them out of what they were going through. Maybe you found out you were going to be a mom or a dad or a grandparent after years and years of waiting and trying. But whatever you were going through for years leading up to that moment, as soon as that good news hit your ears, it was like the other stuff didn't exist. Now you had hope. This is exactly what happened to the disciples. They were defeated. The leader that they had followed for the last three years. They thought he was going to lead them to victory. And there they saw him being crucified on a cross. 
being killed. And now they were, they were left to wonder, what are we going to do with the rest of our lives? We know that, that, that Peter had gone back to fishing. Because that's what he knew. Many of them probably thought that they would not survive because they had been with Jesus. But here comes the good news. And this good news is the message of the gospel. Jesus died, but he lives again. And this good news brought otherworldly courage into the lives of the disciples. Not only was this good news that Jesus has written, risen, but it also meant that now they can live forever because of the sacrifice of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. It meant that Jesus came back to life. But it meant that anyone who followed him would also live with him for eternal life. And this is extra special good news. You know, the song we sang earlier puts this truth well in the first verse. It says, I serve a risen Savior, and He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives. That's the piece of good news that you need. To go from being cowardly to courageous. And it can help you to face this world. No matter what you're going through, know this. Know that the, the person who saved you, this God who saved you, he died and he rose again. He faced down every enemy and defeated them. And now, because you follow him, you are going to live forever as well. And you need to let that good news sink in. And change you completely. And we know this is true from Romans 10, chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. It says this. It says that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You'll be saved. It's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. You see, there's nothing in this world that can bring you to shame once you are a believer in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We need to live in that fact and let this good news bring the same kind of courage to us that it brought to these formerly cowardly disciples. The resurrection of Jesus should give you courage. The next thing that I see from the scripture is that the preaching of the gospel will give you courage. The preaching of the gospel will give you courage. You know, how many of you are familiar with the, the chicken and the egg? You know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? How many chicken people do we have? How many egg people do we have? A few of you. Okay. So we got, it's a, a little slightly uh, leaning toward the chicken coming first. And I, I think according to my uh, exegetical, uh, you know, no, I can't even say the word. Yeah, I know. I was, I was being, but uh, of all, I, it's a fancy way of saying I think it was the chicken too. Uh, but anyhow, what comes first? The chicken or the egg? That's not the important question. What comes first, courage or preaching the gospel? Because here's the deal a lot of us made. God, if, if, if you'll just allow me to, if you'll just infuse me with some courage, then I will preach the gospel. How many of you are like that? If you just give me the words, God, just give me the words, then I'll go out and preach the gospel. Or, does it work this way? We go out and we preach the gospel and then he gives us power and courage in return. So which is it? Romans 1.16 says this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Meaning I'm not afraid to preach it. It's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew and then to the Gentile. Maybe it's these two things working in tandem when we have the courage and build up the courage to preach the gospel. God piles on us more courage and more power than we could ever think of. Listen to what it says in our scripture from Acts. It says, starting in verse 3, it says, 
They seized Peter and John, who because, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. So here's Peter, who wouldn't even answer a girl, a servant girl, that he had been with Jesus just a few days ago. Now is preaching to the point of being thrown in jail. And he's preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when he preaches this message and he boldly proclaims it, 5,000 people believe his message. That's not a bad second sermon, folks. Yeah, you know, the first sermon, you know, at, at Pentecost, there's a whole group of thousands that get saved. And then Peter's second sermon is this one here. And then like 5,000 people. Yeah, some people could hang them up after those two. I'm done. But why were they so successful? Because God worked through Peter to give him courage and power and, and brought about some amazing results. Let me tell you this. Every time you preach the gospel, you are showing courage. And God will supply the power. And every time you are preaching the gospel, God will give you more and more courage to do it more and more. We all have that voice that we hear. And it's saying, well, now's not the right time to share the gospel with this person. Anybody else have that voice? Because I'm afraid that they're going to reject my message. Or I'm afraid that this will push them away from, the, from, from, from being a Christian. Or I'm afraid. Fear comes from where? The enemy. You must never listen to any voice that tells you that it's not good to share the gospel. Because that voice is a liar. And that voice is trying to keep you away from tapping into your godly courage and power that's available to you. When you share the gospel and the more you share it, you will receive more and more courage and power. The preaching of the gospel gives you courage. And the last thing that I see from our scripture is that the Holy Spirit of God gives you courage. The Holy Spirit of God gives you courage. Let's take a look at verse 7 of our scripture. It says, They had Peter and John brought before them, and they began to question them, By what power or name did you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of people who are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone your builders rejected, which has become the, the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. I love verse 8. It said, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them. And then he land base. <laughs> The very people he's talking to for killing Jesus. You guys are the ones who did it. This took some boldness. This took some courage. This took some courageousness. And it might have cost Peter his own life. But because he had the Holy Spirit of God in him, he was obedient no matter what it might cost him. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to take the name Peter out of verse 8 and substitute your own in it. Then Ed, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them. How would that change the words that you would use? Then Sue, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
said to them. Then Pam, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, What would you and could you tell people with the boldness and courage that the Holy Spirit provides you? You were created to be a vessel in which the Holy Spirit dwells in. And God wants to take you to a place where courage is oozing out of you because the Holy Spirit is in you. Because that Holy Spirit is the same God that walked out of the tomb this morning. It's the same God. It's the same power. It's the same force that did not think that death was the end and proved it by walking out in courage and boldness. So what will you have to say if you give the Holy Spirit full control to live through you? I want you to take notice of the last words of our scripture. It says this. When they... Who's they? It's the leaders. The Roman leaders, the Jewish leaders. When they saw the courage of Peter and John. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were... Astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. How many among us today has a doctorate in theology? Anybody? How about a master's in Bible? How about a four year degree in, in religious studies? Not a one of us. Dawn. Dawn's got one. How many of you think that you're pretty ordinary? Pretty ordinary? So pretty much everybody in here, these, this verse is speaking to. Ordinary, unschooled people. But what set them apart? What set them apart was their courage. Was their courage. And where did that courage come from? It came from them spending time with Jesus. Period. They could not be stopped. And the same can be said of us if we ask the Holy Spirit to come and to fill you up. You know, in the 16th century, there was a Protestant reformer in England. His name was uh, Hugh Latimer. And, and he was a great preacher of his day. And had, as a result of his preaching, he had many opportunities to speak. And, and once he found the opportunity to preach before King Henry VIII of England. And he thought about this great responsibility to bring the message to the king. And, and he realized that the message that God laid on his heart was not the message that the king would want to hear. And so as he began his sermon, he began to jot down these notes in a little notebook. And it said this, Latimer, Latimer, do you remember that you're speaking before the high and mighty King Henry VIII, who has power to command you to be sent to prison, and who can have your head cut off, if it please him? Will you not take care to say nothing that will offend royal ears? He paused and continued. Here's the next paragraph. Latimer, Latimer, do you remember that you're speaking before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Before him at whose throne Henry VIII will stand, before him to whom one day you will have to give an account yourself. Latimer, Latimer, be faithful to your master and declare all of God's word. Latimer faced the choice. Would he preach what man wanted to hear? Or would he preach what Christ would have him preach? <coughs> Latimer took a stand for truth and he preached boldly. And Henry didn't have him beheaded. But Henry's daughter, Queen Mary, did have him beheaded eventually. But now he stands in eternity 
next to God who rose from the grave assured of the courage that he showed on that day? Think he has any regrets standing next to Jesus? So this morning I ask you, can you say that you have the same courage that Latimer showed? Can you say that you have the same courage that Peter showed on this day preaching to the crowd? Can you say you have enough courage as a Christian to fully proclaim that Jesus is raised from the dead? That you can bring this message to those who need to hear it, filled with the Holy Spirit, and you can make a difference in their lives. Do you have that courage? I want to read that last verse again. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. And Lord, if we learn anything from what has been spoken today, may it be this. That because of your resurrection, we as Christians should have courage. And be emboldened to share the gospel message of the resurrection to all those who need to hear. And Lord, that you have even provided us a vehicle, the Holy Spirit, to bring more and more courage in us and to us and through us. So Lord, I do pray that we'll be great men and women of God, filled with the courageousness that Peter showed as he preached this message in the book of Acts. And Lord, we will thank you and praise you when we see you courageously speaking through through your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> this time we're going to be participating in communion, so I'm going to ask the board to come forward at this time to, uh, as we uh, prepare to give the elements to you. Um, right now.
Corinthians in the eleventh chapter, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Son, Jesus, and his sacrifice. Lord, for his body that was broken for us. We, th we say thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. same way after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Amen. Lord, to 
Forgive us of our sins. And Lord, to cover over them so that we may have eternal life. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name.
when they saw that they were unschooled, ordinary men, and they saw the courage they had, they said, whoa, these men have been with Jesus. That's the Doug Henry version of the last scripture of the day. Go be with Jesus and share the gospel. And the church will be in excellent shape, I guarantee it. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful Easter. Mm. Thank <laughs> you.